Good morning, fourth grade. Today we're going to work on how we can add and subtract fractions. All right, so yesterday's video we were adding unit fractions. Today we're going to build on to that and move past unit fractions and how we can have different fractions and still have a total adding up our fractions, okay? So one example would be this right here. All right, so this happens to be a unit fraction, but this one is not. Can we add these two fractions together? Yes, yes we can. And what is the reason that allows us to be able to add these two fractions up together? If you said because they have a common denominator or the same number at the bottom, you're correct. In order to add and subtract fractions, we must have a common denominator. Okay, so now that they have a common denominator, all we need to do is leave this denominator alone because it stays the same. And what do we do up top? Yep, two plus one, which is three. Some of you are already looking at this and saying, oh, it's already equivalent to one. We already know that anytime your numerator is the same number as our denominator, that gets you to one, okay? All right, so one way to visualize this on a tape diagram would be, again, our denominator tells us how many total pieces there are. Our numerator tells us how many are shaded out of the possible denominator. So if I have my two thirds here, how many um, lines would I put in? How many partitions would I place? Well, if the denominator is three, it's always one less. So draw two lines, and that lets me see one, two, three pieces, which represents my denominator. So again, the numerator tells me how many parts out of three, or how many are shaded out of three one and two. Okay. All right, so I want to now represent what one thirds would look like on a tape diagram. It has the same length. Okay, it's not super exact, but you guys see what I'm going for here. Okay, it represents the same shape because again, out of thirds, so it's going to have two partitions. But now only one out of the three are going to be shaded in. Okay, so if I separate two thirds, which this is representative of two thirds because two out of three parts are shaded, plus one third, which is one out of three whole parts shaded, would give me how many? So how would I change this into a tape diagram? Excuse me, that shows me this. Would equal. Again, same, same shape, same roughly the same size, okay? Because it's out of a denominator of three. Two partitions, and I have one, two, now three whole pieces out of three shaded. Two thirds plus one thirds will give me three thirds. And looking at it visually, it shows me that three thirds is the same as one whole piece. And that is a visual display of what this fraction represents. All right, now we're going to move on to making sure that we can add by finding a common denominator. All right, so if we're going to add three-fifths plus one-half, can see that. All right, three-fifths plus one-half. <clears throat> can I add that up right now? Can I say three plus one is four, five plus two is seven? Yes, I can do that, but that would be wrong. So let's do it correctly. All right, so what do I need to have in order to add a fraction? If you said common denominator, you're doing a great job. All right, you need to have a common denominator when you add. 
Okay, you can't just say, I'm going to pick a five because a five is a much prettier number and that's going to be my denominator. No, that's ridiculous. You need to have a common denominator. All right, so in order to have a common denominator, this should bring back some memories of what we did not so long ago. We need to figure out a multiple that both five and two have in common. So some of us are very quick at that mental math game because our math facts are very fluid in our brains. But some of us need a little reminder and that's okay. So I'm gonna start with my fives and I'm going to count four or five times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, the reason again I'm doing this is because I need to find something that both five and two have in common. Okay, now that I've gone and done my multiples of five, five times, I usually just keep it at five. That's a good safe place to stop. Okay, I'm gonna go and do the same thing with my twos. So two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times three is eight, I know you said it, two times five is 10. Okay, that's usually enough. And if again, by the time you get to this point, by the times five, and you still don't have anything in common, then you go out a couple more, a couple more, a couple more, till you get something that they have in common. All right, what is the smallest number that they have in common? All right, I know that you noticed that 10 right there. All right, I just circle it just so that it's nice and bam in my face, I can see it. All right, now that I know that they have a common denominator, I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna put that 10 right here, but I need to do something. Something happened to get from five to 10. Whatever that something is, I need to do that up top. So. Five, in order to get from five to 10, what did I do? What was this here? Finding my multiples. Okay, so five times, and again, checking your work. So this is our ones column, twos, threes, fours, fives. If you wanna write times one, times two, times three, if you wanna do that so it helps you, you can do that too. If you need to write all this on a scratch piece of paper so it's not all messy everywhere, you can do that also. Five times two gives you 10. So I'm just gonna write a two here, and this just lets me know what I'm doing. Because whatever I do down here, guess what? I gotta do that same thing up here for my numerator. So five times two is 10. Is that true? Yes. So three times two would give me what? Bing, bing. So I'm done with this fraction. I'm just gonna cross off, you don't have to, but I need a little bit cleaner of a space. I'm gonna clean that up by crossing it out. This is now the, um, the fraction that I'm going to work on because now I have a common denominator. All right, same thing here. I need to multiply two times something to get to my 10. What did I do here? Multiply two times five to get to my 10, okay? Whatever I multiply here, I have to multiply also as my numerator. So if two times five is 10, which is true, one times five would give me five. I'm just crossing this off so I know I don't need to do anything else with that. Now, what am I left with? I have six tenths and five tenths. Can I now add those two together? Yes, and why is that? Mm -hmm. because they have a common denominator. Now that they have a common denominator, all I have to do is add my numerator. Six plus five is 11. Does my denominator change? No. Today's lesson is making sure you can and remember how to have a common denominator when you're adding fractions. I know that you guys want to go one step further with this right here, which you already are saying in your head, Mrs. Williams, I know what that fraction is an example of. Thank you very much. That'll be next day's lesson. But today we're focusing on how we can find a common denominator. This is some mental math that goes on in our head. Some of us are also choosing to write it down, which is again, perfectly okay. Okay, we're gonna do one more. 
Okay, just remember, just because I'm erasing it doesn't mean it's gone forever. You can always rewind, rewind this video and ta-da, there it goes again, okay? Today we're adding and subtracting fractions, but we're doing the same thing. Can we subtract these two fractions? No, you can't go four minus one is three, six minus two is four. You can, but again, you'd be wrong. So let's do it the correct way. We need to find a what? Common denominator. Okay, I'm gonna continue using my multiples, um, but you don't have to. Some of you are already noticing the thing that these two numbers have in common. Okay, again, this represents my multiples. Six times one is six, six times two is 12, six times three times four, six times five. Same thing, two times one, two times two, two times three, and so on, okay? Now I need to find a number that these two numbers have in common. I know it can't be the two because six is greater than two. So two and four are no longer an option. Looking at the six. Ooh, it starts with a six. But bam, that one was pretty easy. I know a lot of you already thought about that quickly in your heads. Great. Now that we know what the common denominator is, I'm gonna write my denominator here. You know what? I actually don't have to do anything here with this one because it's already at a denominator of six. Ta -da. All right, so now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this. I'm not sure why I wrote it outside the box. No, I was inside. Okay, two times something will give me six. Two times what? If you're not sure, two times one, two times two, two times three. Ta -da. Three. Two times three equals six, true. Whatever I do with my denominator, I must do with my numerator. That's why I put that box in there, because it's the same number. 2 times 3 is 6, true. 1 times 3 is 3. Now let's take a look. Don't want that. I'm done with that. Do I now have the ability to subtract my fraction? Yes, because use the language, they both have a common denominator, the same number as our denominator, common. All right, now can I subtract four minus three? Yes. Six, it stays the same. It's the thing that they have that is common. So four, six minus one half, find that common denominator. Four, six minus three, six equals one, six. All right. Today's review was again focusing on how we can add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And in order to do that, you must first find a common denominator. Today's assignment um, is going to be again working on these kinds of uh, questions. You guys can do it. And if you're struggling or have any questions along the way, stop. Don't get frustrated. Ask for help. Okay? Otherwise, um, not otherwise, just continue to do this, watch the video, do the work. Again, this is for you guys. Um, do your best. Please turn in your work. We love checking that work, giving you responses and feedback. And that's all I gotta say about that. Have a great day.